I'm not ashamed. Does John 3.16 teach the doctrine of salvation by faith alone? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of John on walking through the Bible. The glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, turn to John chapter 3. We're going to be reading from verses 9 to 21. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, John chapter 3, beginning verse 9. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly I say to you, We speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And Moses lifted up the, as, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. The light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen they have been done in God. In our last lesson, we looked at Jesus explaining to Nicodemus, a Pharisee member of the Sanhedrin, that in order to enter the kingdom, one must be born again. This is not a physical birth, but a spiritual birth that occurs when one is born of water and the Spirit. We determine that water is water baptism, which is submitted to by a person in faith. The water does nothing to remit your sins, but in obeying God's commands, you place your faith in God and the Holy Spirit to remit your sins. The Holy Spirit is the one who reveals the word of God to man through scriptures. The scriptures are what produces faith to obey, and through faith and obedience, God is the one who actually forgives sin. Thus, one is born of the Spirit when one in faith obeys God in baptism. The problem, though, with the Pharisees and the Jewish minds of that day as a whole is that they thought they were saved by their physical works, their religiosity. This especially revolved around the act of circumcision, as we will see later on in the New Testament. They placed their salvation on the physical, while God always has placed salvation on the spiritual. That's why when we come down to verse 9, Nicodemus doesn't understand how what Jesus said could be so. Jesus chastises Nicodemus for this statement, saying that how can you be a teacher of Israel? and not know these things. Sure, Nicodemus might not have a full understanding of being born again, since baptism wasn't commanded under the Old Testament. But believing one could save themselves simply by doing enough good works is not taught in the Old Testament, even under the law of Moses. After all, did they really believe that the blood of a bull or a goat could actually remit sin? Did they really think that the scapegoat actually bore the sins of the people and carried them out into the wilderness? Did they really think that mankind could perform enough good works to outweigh the sin that he has committed? Shouldn't they have realized that God's grace has always been what has saved them through faith in obeying what was commanded? Just because the blood of bulls and goats didn't remit sin didn't mean they didn't need to be offered under the old law. It just meant the man of faith would obey God's command and rely on God's grace to do what the animal's blood could not. In, ca in the case of the animal's blood, we have time and time again noted that that didn't remit sin, but it gave the one who offered it the promise of forgiveness that would come through the death of Christ. Jesus goes on to tell Nicodemus that we, meaning himself, speak about what we know and testify about what we have seen, yet you do not receive our witness. Jesus spoke to Nicodemus about earthly things, the wind which he, cre which he created according to chapter 1, 
And Nicodemus did not understand or really believe what Jesus said there. How then could Nicodemus believe when Jesus expounded to him about heavenly things like salvation? How come Jesus had the authority to speak about these heavenly things? Because he was the Son of Man who came down from heaven. He was an actual witness to all things, both physical and spiritual. We cannot physically see the new birth with our physical eyes, but Jesus can see the new birth because as God, he sees our hearts. To take the abstract topic of the new birth and spiritual salvation and make it a little more concrete and easier to understand, Jesus refers Nicodemus to a story that he should know well, the story of the bronze serpent found in Numbers 21, verses 4 to 9. If you recall from our recent study of Numbers, Israel had disobeyed God by murmuring against him, so he sent fiery serpents, poisonous serpents, among them, and whoever was bitten by these serpents would die. Israel pleaded with God for mercy, and so God had Moses make a bronze serpent and place it on a pole, and whoever looked upon the bronze serpent would live. They would receive physical salvation. But when it comes to the new birth and spiritual salvation, Jesus was going to be lifted up, die on the cross for the remission of sins. And whoever looked to the cross and believed in Jesus would not perish, but have everlasting life. That this life is even available is because God so loved the world that he sent Jesus to die from our sin, to, to die for our sins, and to save us from our sins. What happens to those who disbelieve? Well, they are condemned. In fact, they are condemned already because they are in sin and the wages of sin is death. Now, why would someone choose to remain condemned when they in faith could believe in Jesus and be saved? Because sin has enticed man to remain in darkness and not come to the light, for they hate the light due to the fact that the light will expose their evil. However, there would be some who will hear the truth and instead of remaining in darkness, they will come to the light and obey God. These are the ones who will be saved. Before closing, we have to quickly ask, is Jesus teaching in John 3.16 the doctrine of salvation by faith alone, belief alone? Not if you read the context. Just because Moses placed the bronze serpent on the pole doesn't mean that all Israel was automatically saved. They had to believe that if they looked on the pole, they would actually be saved. They actually had to look to obey. Jesus says that we must be born of water and the Spirit. If we refuse to be baptized for the remission of our sins, then the Holy Spirit hasn't promised to forgive us our sins. So it doesn't matter how many good works we do, we haven't obeyed God. We aren't looking to the cross of Christ. We're looking to ourselves for our own salvation. And therefore, we cannot be saved. So no, John 3.16 doesn't teach the doctrine of salvation by faith alone. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord will only hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of John chapter 3, verses 22 to 36 as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.